Rounds of showers and thunderstorms continue to develop across central and eastern Kentucky. We'll track the latest on the flash flood threat coming up. As more heavy rain moves in, some people in central Kentucky are still cleaning up from flood damage earlier this week. An NBA player returning to the bluegrass to give back to his hometown, how he's helping children get ready for a new school year. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening to you. Rounds of heavy rain soaked much of the bluegrass today, and even more of it is on the way. A WKYT first alert severe weather day continues. The rain today even caused some flooding. In the Broadhead community of Rockcastle County, high water covered a few roads and even forced the Little World's Fair to be canceled tonight. For the very latest on the flash flood threat, we begin with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Hi, Amber. It was one of those days where we had these very heavy rain producing showers and storms. Then you had some areas basically getting nothing. This isn't the main show. That comes later tonight, tomorrow. But you look at some of the rainfall totals on Defender from earlier in the day. Look at Southern Kentucky. Several spots, at least Defender, estimating greater than three inches of rain just since this afternoon. And that'll be the cause for concern as we go forward into tonight and especially tomorrow and tomorrow night. And for that reason, flash flood watch continues for much of central and eastern Kentucky. Now, your uh, life first alert defender late this evening, not showing a whole heck of a lot. That's some at least good news in the short term. A little light shower, sprinkle action in the parts of the metro, but back to our west now. Some gusty showers trying to pop back up across the BG Parkway down the I 65 corridor. But it's once we zoom out and show you what's going on into western Kentucky and parts of Missouri now, you see the showers and storms beginning to really ramp up. Area of low pressure, you see the pinwheel, everything going counterclockwise around low pressure. That's important because on your future radar, hour by hour, watch your timeline here. You can actually see spiraling bands of showers and storms developing later tonight into tomorrow morning around that center of low pressure that's going to walk across southern parts of Indiana and then into parts of central Kentucky. So as we go deeper into tonight and through tomorrow, the heaviest rain should begin to fall. Amber, this is mainly for creeks and some street flooding that we'll be on guard for as we go through the next 24 hours. We'll see if we've uh, made any changes in that rainfall forecast when I come back here in about 10 minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Heavy rain flooded parts of Pineville and Bell County tonight. At one point, around a foot of water covered some downtown streets. In one neighborhood, emergency managers say 400 pound rock blocked a culvert, and that caused water to flood some nearby homes. Crews say they'll be working to make sure that other culverts in the county are clear. No injuries have been reported there. In Bath County, some people are still trying to clean up from Monday night's flooding. So a forecast of more heavy rain comes at a really bad time. Tonight, the Bath County emergency manager talked to us about what's being done to prepare. Garrett Weimer continues our first alert weather team coverage. Parts of eastern Kentucky were still feeling the effects of Monday night storms long before the first drop fell on Wednesday. With the creek running right here inside our house, you can hear it. It's like a ro roaring river. High water caused problems on roads across Bath County earlier in the week, and that remained the concern as the rain rolled in again. Um, everything washed down from the interstate. All the rock and debris came across the road, making it impassable. Of course, low water forward bridge down here, it's always underwater. Emergency Management Director Jason York spent the day driving around the county, surveying damage that wasn't reported after the last round of storms. Not long after that, the cycle started over. We're getting pretty good at recovering from these storms, unfortunately, because we've been hit with them so often. With school starting Thursday in Bath County, the emergency management director says they're keeping their eyes closely on the storms so they can make sure the roads are clear in time for classes. And I think now uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, school buses, parents taking children to school. Uh, we just need to be prepared for that and make sure that uh, the roadways are clear and safe for them to travel on. And while high water isn't fun for anyone and can be dangerous to deal with, Folks in some areas, like Stepstone Road, have come to expect it. We're used to it. <laughs> you just kind of wait it out, wait for the water to go down. In Bath County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. 
Now, we are always tracking storms on WKYT.com, and you can as well. You can use an interactive radar to zoom all the way into your neighborhood. Download the WKYT news and radar apps to keep up with the weather when you're on the go. And you can share your pictures and video with us. Just email them to eyewitness at WKYT.com or use the hashtag KYWeather. New tonight, we are learning more about the man police say stormed a Tennessee movie theater armed with a pellet gun, a hatchet, and pepper spray. Police have identified him as 29-year-old Vincente Montano. Police say they shot and killed him after the attack at the theater in Antioch just outside of Nashville this afternoon. Kenneth Craig has the latest on the investigation. People ran in a panic as a SWAT team shot and killed an armed man who launched an attack at a movie theater in Antioch, Tennessee, Wednesday afternoon. It was a lot, a lot of shot. It was, it was coming from the uh, side the theater. Police shot the suspect after he left through a back door. Seven people were inside this theater watching the latest Mad Max movie when the suspect, wearing a surgical mask and carrying a pellet gun and hatchet, started blasting people with pepper spray. Three people were overcome, including this man who was also cut by the hatchet. I'm eternally grateful, <laughs> excuse me, for Metro Police Department for their fast response today. I have no idea why this gentleman decided to attack us. The shooter also carried two backpacks. The bomb squad blew up one of them. Inside, they found a fake explosive device. The police chief urged people to be aware of their surroundings. This is maybe what we call the new normal, and uh, we can't just shut down America. We can't say we're not going to theaters. We can't say we're not going to church. We carry on. So far, police don't know of a motive for the attack. Kenneth Gregg, CBS News. Police say Montano had been committed for mental issues four times. They say none of the victims were seriously injured. New tonight, the family of a man killed in Jessamine County has planned a memorial service for him. Shane Washington died last Friday after investigators say Thomas Carson attacked him with an axe during a fight. Police arrested Carson and charged him with murder. Washington's wife says she wants everyone who knew him to gather tomorrow for the memorial service so they can share memories together. She says Washington Washington was a kind man who cared about his family. He took care of us. He's, he was our sole supporter. And nobody ever had a bad word to say about him. The memorial service will begin tomorrow afternoon at 5. It will be held at Riverview Baptist Church on Camp Daniel Boone Road in Lexington. New tonight, police say they have a better idea of where a Kentucky inmate who escaped from prison four months ago could be. State police say they have credible information that James Dennis is now in the Henderson area. He's been on the run since April 7th. On that day, police say Dennis and another inmate, Kelly Conway, walked away from Blackburn Correctional Complex in Lexington. Dennis was serving a 13 year sentence for meth and flagrant non support convictions out of Davis and Union counties. Conway also has not been caught. One week from today, Fayette County students will return to class for a new school year. Tonight, a Lexington native and current NBA player was in town to make sure they all have the tools they need to be successful. Shelvin Mack sponsored a back to school rally. New at 11, Monique Blair talks to him about how he's giving back to his hometown. You got a lime green one, too, if you want a lime green one. For dozens of Lexington area children, Wednesday night was a night they won't soon forget. What's up, little man? Hello. What's up? Doing all right? Atlanta Hawks NBA player Shelvin Max Foundation teamed up with the Kentucky Basketball Academy, Papa John's, and Life Change. You're welcome. And handed out pizza and 275 well, backpacks right, full of school supplies. Y'all kill me with all this. Is this UK blue or what blue is this? Free to the first children in line. There you go. You're welcome. I feel like it's a great uh, chance for me to get back to the community. You know, they always help me out uh, during times. I always have people look out for me, and I feel like I can do the same thing to help another child. Shelvin Max says he chose to hold the back to school bash here in the Winburn area because this is where he grew up. I just live in Winburn. I went to Winburn Middle School, went to Brown Station High School, so this is like home to me. Hitter! 
All right. And events like this just give kids a sense of direction. Um, somebody like Sheldon that came from Lexington that made it all the way to the NBA, I think it gives them uh, a purpose, something they can really fight for every day and, and have a good direction in their life to follow in the path that he did and, and really chase and fulfill their dreams. And as Mac hopes to improve the lives of children in Lexington, what Kendra color backpack you want? Kendra Slaughter says this event also teaches her children a valuable life lesson. I think it'll teach them to give back in the long run. In Lexington, you gonna get on TV, all right? You gotta smile. Monique Blair, WKYT. Well, Mac will also help children at basketball camp tomorrow and Friday at the Kentucky Basketball Academy. For more information, just go to WKYT.com. An unusual ending to a police chase in Lexington today. Police say the suspect's SUV accidentally crashed into a police cruiser. Lexington police say they saw 28-year-old Wesley Brown taking part in a drug deal, so they tried to stop his car. But police say they soon stopped the chase, deciding it was too dangerous. Minutes later, police say Brown was trying to hide by driving on sidewalks, but instead they say he hit a police cruiser on Elm Tree Lane. At that point, suspect jumped out of the vehicle, fled on foot. Uh, our officers pursued him on foot and uh, were able to take him into custody. Police say the SUV Brown was driving was reported stolen. The officer in the damaged cruiser, Officer Christopher Burlisle, still helped with the arrest. Police say he was taken to the hospital with just minor injuries. A statue of Confederate President Jefferson Davis will be staying in the state capitol rotunda. The State Historic Properties Advisory Commission voted 7-2 to to keep the statue of the Kentucky native where it is. But the commission says an educational component will be added to the statue to help visitors learn about the the Civil War and how it divided many Kentucky families. Both candidates for governor had called for the statue to be removed, and the NAACP says it will continue to fight to get rid of it. Looking to save some money on back to school shopping? Well, you may want to consider a road trip. Four states bordering Kentucky are offering back to school sales tax holidays this month. Ohio's first tax holiday is this weekend. You won't have to pay a tax on clothing priced at $75 per item or less or school supplies priced at $20 per item or less. Tennessee, Virginia, and Missouri also offer sales tax holidays this month. The man known for Kentucky Fried Chicken has been honored with a new statue. A life-size bronze statue of the late Colonel Harlan Sanders was unveiled tonight in Sanders Park in Corbin. His first restaurant opened there more than 70 years ago. Corbin city leaders say the park and the statue are part of an effort to revitalize Main Street. And Sanders family members say it's a fitting tribute. I think it's meant a lot to me to be able to see the unveiling of the statue and what a good job they've done on it. I mean, it looks really good. I mean, it actually looks like it. Louisville artist Raymond Graff created the statue and installed it.